to just a quick book placement, uh, product placement for my books under the author named Derek Hemingway. Uh, first, we have the first installment in um, The Human Saga, which is my epic trilogy of novellas about a future civilization of corporate fascism that is being invaded by an alien cult. We have The Mortician's Daughter, a dark fantasy set in Mesoamerica about a sorceress who blocks out the sun uh, to create a kingdom of darkness and evil full of ghosts and monsters. It's fucking awesome. Uh, part two of the Human Saga, and then part three. There's currently my first full-length novel in the works, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, that's about all. Song Snob Reacts! Welcome back to Nathan's Song Snob's channel, complete with Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm riding the wave today because literally the new Tom McDonald song dropped four hours ago. Four fucking hours. So I'm literally right on top of this the minute it comes out. Well, okay, not the minute, but literally the exact same day at the time of this recording. So about as close to the minute as I can possibly get. Now this one's apparently called The System. The dude is highly controversial, gets very political. I think this will be very interesting from here on out. Uh, with that being said, this should intrigue the listener quite a bit. Tom's got something to say, and it's going to get crazy. With that being said, we will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go. Welcome to the world, baby boy, I'll paint you red and white and blue The indoctrination starts as soon as you come out the womb Pretty quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculums at school And if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news Pick your team, right or left, pick the red pill or the blue You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose Don't forget to buy designer, because Gucci makes you cool We prioritize material belongings over truth Get a job that you can't stand so you can buy some cans of food Go overseas and die for freedom, there's some oil we can use Our democracy exists so that you think that you can choose But our algorithms make you do what we want want you to do what's the problem you're depressed society has you confused we got medication for you that you'll probably abuse go get married to a lady who also don't have a clue and pump out a few babies that are just the same as you welcome to the system everyone's a victim doesn't matter if you're black or white it hates you all here inside the system violence is a symptom fighting for what's right but somehow everyone is wrong welcome to the system everyone's a victim doesn't matter if you're black or white it hates you all here inside the system violence is a symptom fighting for what's right but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the world, baby girl, I'll paint you pink if that's okay We'll encourage self-destruction through the music that you play We divided all the men by trying politics and race And honestly, it's working awesome, so for you, we'll do the same Never teaching you to love yourself, inject you full of hate Objectify your sexuality, then blame you for the rape And weaponize the differences that make our men and women great Then just to screw with you, erase the genders Everyone's the same We'll empower you with rights to vote and fight for equal pay Then have the men turn into women and you'll fight for them again But you thought you had it figured out, but everything has changed Welcome to the system Please enjoy your stay Here's a bible and a bottle of the cheapest booze we make Find a man who can take care of you to fill the holes we made Buy a house and settle down, fulfill your duty, procreate And make a couple babies who will also do the same Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone Everyone is wrong. Welcome to the world, everybody. I'ma paint you black and white. I'ma make you hate each other so that everyone will fight. I'ma give you our religion, let the righteous find the light. But I will also give you science to oppose the word of Christ. And I'ma give you borders, they're imaginary lines. If you cross them, go to war and win when everybody dies. And I'ma give you money that you'll value more than life. And let the 1% have everything while you fight to survive. And then I'll give you politics, I'll call it left and right. And while you divide yourselves, I will conquer both the sides. Can't you see? I'm the system, my whole purpose is divide. What you choose will never matter because every Everything is mine. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is
is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Well, <clears throat> he always finds a way to give these things a, a scale of epicness, including elements of other musical forms beyond just rap music. That always makes it uh, makes it more of a diverse affair with him. It, he fit, he fit, he uh, definitely fit, um, fits the measure of the beat with his rapping. He always sticks to the beat. He doesn't syncopate much. Which, that has merit. Syncopation with the beat would also have merit. It really just depends on what kind of musical background you have, whether you would like one or the other. Suffice to say, I like a little of both. Probably because I let, let listen to rock music and, and metal and all that. But, generally speaking, his raps are always pretty good. Very epic. Very, uh... Very white. Let's just put it that way. Very white. Uh, and obviously he's kicking up another storm of controversy here, but I think deep down we all know he's kind of right on this one. The current societal system has a lot of things about it that are pretty fucked up. Of course, that's because it was created by human beings, and human beings are pretty fucked up. It's not so much the system... It's us. It's a little of both. But, yeah, musically, this had a very epic uh, scale. Had a nice beat. He followed it. And generally speaking, it was not the most robust. I suppose that getting it too robust would have gotten in the way of it being a rap. But I like robustness, and it is one of the criteria I use to judge music. So, given it's a general lack of robustness, I would say that I would rate this... 4 out of 5. He could have improved it by having, addition, having additional percussion. Or having more complex percussion. And really, all he could have done is maybe add a couple more steps to the beat. Take it from a simple two-step to a four-step would have been a nice touch. In the background percussion, that is. And also, he could have diversified the melody some. But that may be a limitation to the rap form. So maybe I'll put this at a rare... Four and a half out of five. Not quite fulfilling what I'm looking for, but at the same time, maybe not being fully able to because of the form because of the format of the music. Possibly, I just feel like it could have done more. So, with that being said, let's also take a look at the lyrics. I like to do my lyrical breakdown. I'm not everyone's cup of tea because of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do it anyway. Welcome to the world, baby boy. I'll paint you red, white, and blue. The indoctrination starts as soon as you come out of the womb. Pretty quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculum at school, and if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news. Ha! <laughs> Ouch. So, brand new baby boy. You paint him red, white, and blue. You paint him with patriotic colors. Indoctrination in the system as soon as you come out of the womb. Note him rhyming blue with womb. That's what they call a slant rhyme, where the middle syllable is what matters and the surrounding syllables don't. Blue, womb, it's still an oo. It's an oo syllable, so it technically works. Uh, pretty quick will make you stupid with curriculum at school. Uh, that is also in a continuation of the slant rhyme. But uh, technically speaking, the schools used to not be this bad, right? What happened was is that parents complain about their kids struggling in school, but rather than actually solving the problem the way they should have, 
where to introduce tutors and other stuff to get the kid through the system, they just dumb down the system. And a dumber system makes dumber kids. They fix it by making it easier, not by making the kid better. So, so much for self-improvement. Uh, and a classroom doesn't do the trick will make you watch the news. Well, the news doesn't necessarily make you any dumber, but it definitely, uh, it uses high, it uses very hyperbolic and emotional language to get people hyped up. Uh, the current state of political division is much of a fault of CNN as anything else. Because it uses a lot of emotionally, uh, emotionally exacerbated, uh, emotionally loaded language to push people this way or that. Pick your team right or left. Pick the red pill or the blue. You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose. Don't forget to buy designer because Gucci makes you cool. We prioritize material belongings over truth. Well, I've never done that. Not really. So I must not be in the system. Uh... Pick your team right or left, right, red pill or blue, red. I already made that decision. You can vote, but if you but if you win, still everyone will lose. That's usually true. It's because the you either get someone who's totally corrupt and in it for themselves, or someone who isn't corrupt but doesn't entirely know what they're actually doing. Well, I never thought designer clothes or Gucci made you fucking cool. I buy my clothes at goddamn Walmart. <laughs> I'm cheap. I'm I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, not real, you know, not really into the the designer clothes, an eight hundred dollar shirt. Fuck that, that's a waste of money. I don't I and I don't prioritize material belongings over truth. I I kind of do it the other way around. Material uh, material ownership is like a revolving door. I sell and buy and buy and sell quite regularly. I may eventually uh, sell this trailer and get a different one. Who knows? So you get a job that you can't stand so you can buy some cans of food. Go overseas and die for freedom. There's some oil we could use. Our democracy exists so that you think you could choose. But our algorithms make you do what, you, what we want you to do. Yeah, most people can't stand their jobs either because they suck at it or they feel like it's, you know, the sacrifice of time for money is is ultimately not worth it. Because there's things you want to do with your life. You have life goals. But at the same time, a job kind of takes away from that. But you need the job to buy the food because that's what our current system is like. So you have to have the job so you can buy the cans of food that you need to eat to live. Now, if you were a tradesman, you could get a trade instead. Because that gives you a great deal more freedom because you can make your own hours. Self-employment is also a good idea if you can manage that. I know not everyone can, but there's a lot of options, actually, for uh, freedom of time. Go overseas and die for freedom. Yeah, there's some oil we could use. Yeah, for freedom. The funny thing is we really don't have that much freedom and going to fight overseas really isn't going to get you any more. That's actually just working the system for uh, ga the government gain. Getting more oil, getting more infrastructure, getting more revenue at the cost of human lives. The economics of the U.S. government is very soulless. And it is soulless precisely because they are still prioritizing material wealth over human lives like a fucking uh, utilitarian would. We arguably have a utilitarian government where we're measuring value purely by utility alone. And once you become useless, they toss you aside. Our democracy exists so that you think you could choose. Well, it's not a democracy. It's a constitutional republic. There's a huge difference there. Seriously, read Plato's Republic. And admittedly, a republic could create that same illusion easily enough. So more like voting exists, so you think you can choose. But our algorithms make you do what we need you, what we want you to do. Well, the algorithms didn't always exist. This is a fairly recent assertion. Previously, I think the problem with the system is that 
it's always no, no matter what it's going to be the majority choice even with the uh, electoral college it's going to be the majority choice so your choice is only going to be reflected if it's with the majority so ultimately it's what the people want you to do no matter what you do what the people demand so technically if you got Joe Biden as president that's because the people demanded Joe Biden the algorithms aren't as powerful as Tom is making it seem. This isn't exactly a straw man, but it is definitely hyperbolic. What's the problem? You're depressed. Society has you confused. We've got medication for you that you'll probably abuse. Go get married to a lady who, has, who also don't have a clue and pump out a few babies that are just the same as you. And that comes back to... Um, you know that movie, I think it was Roddy Piper and Keith David? What was that? Uh, they Live. All these signs around that saying, uh, reproduce, bye-bye, sell-sell. You put on the, the magic shades and you can see what the signs really say. And one of those things says, reproduce. If you're depressed, society has you confused. we got medication for you, you probably abuse. Yeah, we got man-made chemicals because we don't use holistic medicine anymore. We used holistic medicine for thousands of years, but now it's like pff, holistic medicine. Who needs that? Who needs all the that all that herbalism? Nah, you don't need herbs. You need fucking like chemicals and shit that's gonna have like nasty side effects. Here, take this pill. It's supposed to take your pain away, but instead it makes you vomit, and then you get in, you get so sick you almost die. Literally happened to me once. A pain med. That they didn't even check for allergies or anything of that nature. Yep, go get married to a lady who also doesn't have a clue. And pump out a few babies that we are, that are just the same as you. So just rinse, repeat. Repeat the cycle. It's kind of true, but also kind of not. Which, like most of the song. Here's the chorus. Welcome to the system. Everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. It hates you all. Uh, here inside the system, violence is a symptom, fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. So basically just saying it's a system where the people in power abuse the people outside of power. Which is certainly true. Uh, there are certainly several incidents of college protests where the system sent officers of the law and they just, they fucked everything up. Right? A lot of people died. Or what? What? Or the incident in Waco, Texas, in 1994, is another example. You go outside the system, and the system fucks you up. So it pretty much hates everyone equally. Then the chorus said goes tw a couple of times, and then here's another verse. Uh, welcome to the world, baby girl. I'll paint you pink if that's okay. We'll encourage self-destruction through the music that you play. We divided all the men by trying politics and race. And honestly, it's working awesome. So for you, we'll do the same. You know, so yeah, Tom pushes the idea that the system creates the divide between people based on race and sex and orientation and all that. Personally, I think people did that themselves. And then that the government just took what was already there and just pushed it farther for personal gain. Vote for us and we'll solve your problem. And the problem never goes away. Because if it did, then they wouldn't have anything to sell you on. Because they're basically used car salesmen. The truth of the matter is... Is that people were dividing themselves over those things. And then the government just worked it like a, like a well-oiled machine. And it, it's just the same for females as it is for males. It, it's no different. I mean, literally, someone I know who I'm very close to is an openly bisexual person, a bisexual woman, and was attacked by another woman. Like, so men do not have a monopoly on this. Not even. Never teaching you to love yourself, inject you full of hate, objectify your sexuality, then blame you for the rape. And weaponize the differences that make our men and women great. 
And just to screw with you, erase the genders, everyone's the same. Bringing in the transgenderism and the erasure of women into it. The erasure of women by introduction of the terms of, like, birthing person. In other words, a woman. But never mind what it says in the dictionary. The dictionary is obviously fascist. But yeah, the society doesn't really uh, teach people to love themselves. It actually teaches them to basically always be looking for more. Better shoes, better clothes, better you. All this sort of, um, you know, superficial crap that doesn't mean a thing. If you're at all a fan of, like, uh, the anime Full Metal Alchemist, specifically the 2003 adaptation, society doesn't want you to be like Hohenheim, it wants you to be like Dante. Instead of pursuing meaningful things, it wants you to pursue short-term pleasure. And short-term pleasure always leads to long-term pain, because short-term pleasure doesn't really satisfy uh, your true heart's desires. The human heart desires meaningful stuff. Love, hatred, a tribe, a, pr a place to belong to, an obstacle to overcome, uh, meaningfulness, not shallow material wealth, which means nothing, that has no value in the long term. And that's what they're making and making people to be, especially women. Then they objectify women and blame you for the rape. Well, there he goes, essentially saying that rape is a manifestation of, uh, essentially the way women look. That has nothing to do with that. That's a very conservative, like, old, old guard conservative view. That's very much out of date and a misconception. And then you weaponize the difference to make our men and women great. Yeah, well, that's a no-brainer. We'll empower you with rights to vote and fight for equal pay, and have the men turn into women, then you'll fight for them again. But you thought you had it figured out, but everything has changed. Welcome to the system. Please enjoy your stay. So yeah, I was just talking about the complete circle of the erasure of women. Where they have to basically fight the same battles again, because now they're being pushed out by men who uh, think they're women because they're mentally ill. Yes, I just said that. I don't care. Gender dysphoria is a mental illness, and you need help. Here's a Bible and a bottle of the cheapest booze we make. Find a man who can take care of you to fill the holes we made. Buy a house and settle down, fulfill your duty to procreate, and make a couple babies who will also do the same. And just like with the men, it just repeats the cycle of the system. So here's alcohol and religion, well, specifically Abrahamic religion, which is the most tribal of all because it's monotheistic. They do not tolerate the idea of any other gods, unlike the, unlike the pre-Christian Romans who would literally be in a mad dash to try and figure out a foreign god? How does this guy work? You know, and wanting to be more tolerant in that way. They were the first empire to have freedom of religion. And then Christianity came along and ruined that. The tribalism of monotheism added to alcoholism, and boy, what a combination that is. So it, it's almost like he's attacking like the, the modern Christian system. Because this is a largely Christian-influenced world and society. And that might have some connection to all the stuff he's talking about, possibly. But this is a little misconceived. Obviously, chorus repeat from earlier. Three chorus repeats, that's not bad. So, welcome to the world, everybody. I'm going to paint you black and white. I'm going to make you hate each other so that everyone will fight. I'm going to give you all religion. Let the righteous find the light. But I will also give you science to oppose the, world of Christ, to oppose the word of Christ. Well, that's... See, that's also another classic misconception, the idea that religion and science clash. 
And again, a little bit of yes, but also a little bit of no. They clash as far as how to represent the world correctly or accurately. Yet at the same time, they don't necessarily clash... <coughs> Excuse me. They don't necessarily clash in any other way. It's just a matter of what your mode of thinking is. Science demands critical thought, and religion typically demands uh, faithful thought. And those two can clash some. But there is a way you can make faithful thought and critical thought work. And that is by what you would call justifiable faith. Which is the idea that you have faith in something because it earned it. Not because it got it because it's so magically delicious. You have faith in something because you have a reason for it. Like, let's say that there's this friend of yours. And you have faith in that friend because he was there for you in the past, right? He, pro he proved himself, and that's why you have faith in him. You didn't just get it, give it to him for free or automatically. You gave it to him because he earned it. And that's my view on religion in a nutshell. You, you believe in something because you have good reason to, not because of a blind faith affair or because your daddy or mommy said you should. But yeah, you paint everybody black and white into two categories in order to divide. You make each other hate each other so that everybody's going to fight each other. Because when everyone's fighting each other, uh, you can't really fight the system itself. And again, that division already existed between people. The, cre the system didn't create that, it's just using it. But yeah, you give people religion, let the righteous find the light. The righteous meaning the people who live within the context of the religion as much as possible. And I'm going to give you borders, their imaginary lines. If you cross them, go to war and win, everybody dies. And I'm going to give you money that you'll value more than life. And let the 1% have everything while you fight to survive. That sounded a little socialist, Tom. I sound a little socialist. And while capitalism has certain excesses, a system like socialism infamous for starving millions and taking great producers and turning them into shit is not the answer. Become economically literate. Read Basic Economics by Tom Sowell. And then read Das Kapital and recognize that the book itself has at least two straw men of capitalism if not more straw men. Because Marx and Engels were not, uh, were not economically literate. Most people are not. They don't take the time to learn economic theory and then apply it properly. And so they create their own, and it becomes naive. Not to get into politics here, but this song's already political as it is. It, at the end of the day, complaining about the 1% having more than you that's a little thing I like to call envy. You're just jealous of the rich. Prove me wrong. I think you're just jealous of the fucking rich. And yes, many people do value money more than life. That's literally the people who complain about fucking, you know, the rich having more. The people who, who make that complaint, they're always going on about wanting everything free or wanting everything. They're always about the money. Right, they buy nice clothes, they buy nice shoes, they're they're vain. These self proclaimed socialists are vain. They're always buying merchandise and Che Guevara shirts and spending like spending everything. Man, if you cross the borders you go to war and when everybody dies. The imaginary lines are not so imaginary when you consider the fact that human beings have evolved to be tribal, and generally speaking, you have a sort of territory that is the area in which you live, and you don't want your enemies crossing into that territory. So obviously, when it comes right down to it, you're basically going to uh, protect that border. War can be avoided through trade 
and excluding the army to self-defense only. And making your nation thrive through trade. You won't build as powerful a nation that way, but there's more to life than power. There's more to life than winning. It's like the philosophy of evil. The philosophy of evil basically is saying that uh, when you ignore your conscience and hold to no morals, you are capable of anything and therefore unstoppable, is essentially the, the, the philosophy of evil. The philosophy of evil, however, fails to acknowledge the fact that there's more to life than always winning. Winning is a part of life, but there's also other things too that are more valuable. So I would counter with a different philosophy where I would say that when you decide to take the moral high road, you have successfully reduced the number of assholes in the world by one. By taking yourself out of the equation and acknowledging that there's more to life than just winning. And as far as fighting to survive goes, that's just life. That's every day. That aspect of life has never been different. We always have to fight to, li fight to live. That is how life works. You're never going to create a system where that's not the case. It says, and then I'll give you politics, uh, and call, I'll call it left and right. And while you divide yourselves, I'll conquer both, both the sides. Can't you see on the system my whole purpose is to divide? What you choose will never matter because everything is mine. Again, very hyperbolic. Left and right emerges from the French Revolution. It was literally the left, left and right of a gathering hall. The, the left wing of the hall and the right wing of the hall. Literally. The left wing of the hall wanted to change society and the right wing wanted to keep it more or less the same. That's where you get conservative. That's pre um, preferring the status quo over change and then preferring change over the status quo. So that divide is more or less not so much a matter of the system, but a matter of what people really want. And they actually, the two balance out because some change is good and then some tradition is good. So you get the two working together and you do achieve a certain degree of balance. And that's where you get the center. And the closer the center you get, the more sane things get. The further away you get, the crazier it gets. And as for conquering both the sides, both parties, Democrat and Republican, have certainly been conquered. Mostly by essentially power brokers. The system works by, by having people in the system who have all the power and the influence, and they broker power with one another. They afford you one another influence and increase their ranks. The power brokers are the Bushes, the Clintons, and the um, Kennedys, and those were the major power brokers in the system for a long time, and they still are in a lot of ways. And they just broker power, and they have people on both sides. You have the Clintons on the Democrats. You have the Bushes and the Republicans. And then you have the Kennedys respected the, by most sides in some way or another. The purpose of the system is not to divide. The purpose of the system is to afford the power brokers the power that they have to broker it to others. It's about authoritarians and non-authoritarians. The system is a matter of someone having power over someone else. That's how it's always been throughout human history. The, the system of government is exercising power over the people. Being a constitutional republic uh, limits the amount of power they can have, but they still have a fuck ton. They basically live like gods as far as power goes, and you have nothing. With the ability to vote, you may have a tiny scrap of power, but once you make that vote, the power goes straight back to them. It's a cycle. 
voting gives you the power temporarily, then you said then you may send the vote in, then they get the power back. Ideally, this means that the politicians are supposed to be like employees that work for us. We're supposed to be in charge. At least in theory. But in practicality, they're always in charge no matter what, because they have the actual control. We have no means uh, beyond protest to control politicians once they're in office. Once they're in office, all the power is actually theirs. So that comes back to the fact that the, the system can still be used to put authoritarians in power once again. There's basically nothing you can do to prevent that. So Tom is half right and half wrong, and it's very hyperbolic. But it's a good song in the sense that it will fuel uh, discussion on the topic, and maybe people will finally get to start to realize how the system really works in the end. Hopefully. You realize that it's not about the money, it's not about corporate greed, it's about authoritarians. Consider yourself lucky living in a uh, capitalist republic, because capitalism decentralizes the economy, and voting decentralizes power. That's the best system there is right now. That's, that's the best we got. And it still has a heck of a lot of problems. Anyway, there will be a link to, down below to my books. Please buy, download, and read them. And as always, tschüss. Peace. Oh, quick addendum. I forgot to rate the lyrics. Quick addendum. I read out the lyrics, but I forgot to rate them. Uh, the lyrics are obviously 5 out of 5. The rhyme scheme is very clever. Uh, the maximum number of chorus repeats was only 3, so that's a good number. Uh, it's 5 out of 5 out of, in a 4 out of 5 song for music precisely because uh, of the uh, the lack of robustness of the music the lyrics however has a very clever rhyme scheme it's within the beats, within the measure the content is very meaningful if not somewhat inaccurate so it's all very well put together that's 5 out of 5 uh, that's my addendum. Peace, choose.